Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's me, Graves IV. You're here because you may have watched my masterclass video and are here for the build follow-up. If you haven't, I suggest giving it a look. Link card will be at the top part of the screen. We covered our survival tools and how to get yourself out of many sticky situations, as well as our best mobbing tools and how to kill as many things as possible as quickly as possible. Today, we'll be going over what weapons, what exotics, and what mods make this, this build run, as well as some suggestions if you don't have access to the ones I directly suggest. On a personal note, I'll also be giving some pointers on how to slot your armor to make it just a little bit easier on yourself and not always be spending so many resources in swapping elements and all this good stuff. Alright, let's get into it. First up, in the exotic category, the Heart of Inmost Light. This is a fantastic exotic and great for utility and lends itself well to many various builds. Overflowing Light. Using an ability, Grenade, Melee, or Barricade, empowers the other two abilities. Empowered means abilities have faster regen, Melees and Grenades do more damage, and Barricades have more hit points. A quick note about this exotic. They're speaking about the order in which you use your abilities. If you use your Barricade first, it will empower the Grenade and the Melee. If you use your Melee, you will empower the Grenade and the Barricade. If you use the Grenade and the Melee, you will give the Barricade two stacks of Empowerment. If you use the Barricade and the Melee, you will give the Grenade two stacks of Empowerment, doubling up what Overflowing Light is doing for the ability and helping its cooldown come up that much faster. And our next suggestion would be Second Chance. Gain a second charge of Shield Throw Melee, which becomes Shield Piercing, and stuns Barrier Champion. If you don't feel like slotting a specific whatever the season is providing for anti-barrier weapon mod, then something like this could also serve the same purpose. It's a, another one of those utility exotics that they're giving us access to to slowly try to work us away from being so reliant on what weapon to bring, as well as the exotic overhauls to many different weapons this season that gave them various abilities to combat champions. Next up, Doomfang Baldrins, with the perk Horns of Doom. Void melee kills give super aim. While Sentinel Shield is active, melee kills recharge shield throw, which extends your super on hit. This is of course speaking to the actual super, Sentinel Shield. When Sentinel Shield is active, you have access to a projectile that you're able to toss that is the same as our melee projectile we throw when we are in our normal state. However, with Doomfang's pauldrons equipped, the shield throw itself on contact and on kill, extends the super as well as giving you back energy directly to that skill, allowing you to run around and play aggressive frisbee with your enemies. Another fun one to run when doing more generalized content, no backup plans. Force Multiplier. When you have full void melee energy, shotgun final blows grant a void shield and consume your melee energy. Shotgun final blows also give you melee energy provides a moderate benefit to the airborne effectiveness stat of shotguns. Not like something we'll be making the best use of. But the general idea of this exotic is uh, mostly run and gun and have fun. If you have access to a shotgun with a deep ammo pool or just feel like running shotgun ammo finder, this can be a lot of fun. Running around and basically providing infinite survivability as long as you keep running up to things and one-shotting them with your shotgun. Great way to stay alive if the only objective you have in, say, your raid or nightfall is to survive a dangerous instance. Give him a shot. Lost but not forgotten, the Helm of Saint-14. This exotic was an MVP back in the original raiding days when we didn't have access to many variations of exotics or weapons. But the perk, Starless Knight. Targets that enter Ward of Dawn are blinded, while allies that pass through gain a void overshoot, guarding with Sentinel Shield blinds nearby targets. The second half of this perk we're not going to be using too much of. However, the front half, targets that enter the Ward of Dawn are blinded, can be useful if you've been inundated with a whole ton of mobs. While allies that pass through it gain a Void Overshield. Normally, when you enter the Ward of Dawn, you are given this Overshield, but the moment you exit, it goes away. With the Helm of Saint-14, the shield persists when you exit. This doesn't take away anything else that we benefit from Ward of Dawn either. This gives us a giant overshield that can help us stay alive, and we still have access to weapons of light, giving us a great opportunity to, even while under fire, do a whole lot of DPS. And now for our weapon suggestions for each category. We won't be going too in-depth with the perks. I'll speak about my personal preferences, but other than that, 
It's simply about bringing the right perks that fit for the gunplay that you enjoy. First up, let's speak about the Ragahol D. Not sure if I'm saying that. Moving on. I personally enjoy the Ragahol rule, auto-loading holster, and frenzy. This gives us access to a constant damage bonus as well as not having to worry about to reload the weapon on the run. This makes it where you can play in any way you want, really. Fitting in very handy with that Doomfang Pauldron uh, aspect we were talking about earlier. If you happen to have one lying around, the Wither Horde. Pretty much always a good go-to when it comes to practically anything. It's an additive weapon that you can use to do bonus DPS while using another weapon in DPS from a direct hit on a boss or major, as well as an add clear weapon that you can place on the floor and have the DOT kill them as they walk. Wither Horde's a great all-rounder and does take up the exotic slot without providing any massive burst DPS, but if that's not what you're prioritizing, it can be your go-to. Next up, the Arbalus Linear Fusion Rifle. With a perk Compound Force, fire slugs that cause massive damage to combatant shields, strong against barrier champions. The Arbalus was one of the first weapons that we had that got a rework that gave it something that helped combat champions. Now we can just carry it for the generally good ammo economy as well as the reputable amount of damage that it does, providing itself to a lot of many long range situations as well as burst situations. If you happen to be one of those lads that likes to run duality, you may have gotten yourself a good Lingering Dread roll. Lingering Dread is an excellent weapon to carry in the kinetic slot if you don't want to occupy it with an exotic. Lingering Dread has many good rolls, having things such as Chill Flick and other combinations that roll very well with Demolitions. My personal preference is Demolitionist beating Frenzy. More grenades is more better, right? Coming from the Bow of Disciple Raid, the Submission Sub Machine Gun. <laughs> With perks such as Frenzy, Overflow, and many other things like Swashbuckler, there is a large perk pool that can be found in the Submission Submachine Gun, so finding the one that fits your specific playstyle can be a little tough. My personal preference is Overflow, Frenzy, giving it a fantastic damage uptime all the time, as well as a massive clip with Overflow. Hailing or Sailing from the Season 18 Season of Plunder, the Blood Feud Submachine Gun. Blood Feud Submachine Gun comes from the reward chest at the end of Eason's any seasonal event, as well as coming from your Ingram leveling up your seasonal item. With our emphasis on utility, Blood Feud Submachine Gun is an aggressive frame, high damage, high recoil submachine gun, making landing headshots pretty easy with it to be honest, as well as being able to roll things like Pugilist and Wellspring. Another oldie but a goldie, the Iznaki's Bird. In combination with its catalyst that provides it with even more damage when loading the bonus shot, the Izanagi's Burden has been a staple high damage weapon when it comes to boss phases or damage phases in raids. Now that we've covered the kinetic slot, you might be asking why I had no suggestions about scout rifles or pulse rifles. With our build having an emphasis on short to medium range engagements, the scout rifle and pulse rifle is not exactly a high priority to us with having a far medium to long range engagement range. These weapons uh, are good, and if you find yourself needing the extra range, by all means, get them. But, for now, try to prioritize having things that are going to have a high kill time at those close ranges, so you stay in the effective range of the AoE healing that you're going to get from volatile explosions, as well as staying in an easy-to-land range for your shield throw. First up, let's talk about the Fugi 55. Coming from Banshee in the tower simply for completing bannies, this makes this weapon very easily accessible for all levels of play. Capable of rolling a combination as great as Vorpal Weapon and 4 times the Charm. 4 times the Charm being a thin air ammo generator if you've ever heard that term. Meaning, the perk itself is generating ammo despite you not having ammo in your reserves. As long as you're able to land 4 precision shots, you will get 2 free bullets magically created by goodness knows what back in your magazine. Next up, the Deafening Whisper. A void type waveframe grenade launcher. Perfect for crowd control and general mobbing of low health targets. A bit of a counterintuitive suggestion for my previous statement, but the last prediction is one I thought I'd bring up anyway. With this season having anti-barrier pulse rifle, I thought I would just put one in there just in case you found yourself in a nightfall where you desperately need to bring one. The last prediction is capable of many roles, but my favorite would be Kill Clip Outlaw. It is a void type pulse rifle. Next up, the Gnawing Hunger. A void type auto rifle with 600 rounds per minute. It has a very slow, predictable, and easily controllable record. Capable of rolling in combinations such as Substance and Kill Clip. Practically perfect for general mobbing. If you happen to be one of the people that have completed the Dead Messenger exotic quest line, I can also suggest the Dead Messenger in this slot simply because it not only serves our purpose as a Void, but also can swap between all three elements having access to Void, Solar, as well as Arc. 
The Dead Messenger is also a waveform grenade launcher, as the previously mentioned Deafening Whisper. And finally, my personal favorite, as stated in the Master Class video, the Funnel Web. I love the Funnel Web because it is a 900 RPM destructive force. With a roll such as Frenzy and Perpetual Motion, this will keep you in combat as long as you need, as well as having access to Vice Steam. Frenzy and Perpetual Motion give you a constant uptime on a damage bonus as well as an increased reload speed. If you can get this exact roll, I just couldn't see you needing anything else. And coming up in our heavy slot, the Taipan 4FR. The Taipan 4FR is the new hot kid on the block, capable of being crafted at the forge. The Taipan 4FR has a large list of very good perk combinations, my personal favorite being Frenzy and Cloud Cartridge. It is a precision frame linear fuse rifle, giving it bonus damage to, to the hit. And of course, who could ever speak about the heavy slot without talking about the Galahorn Exotic Rocket Launcher? Being locked behind an exotic quest line, as well as having its catalyst locked behind the same mission and the different steps to be taken throughout it. The Galahorn is not so easy to acquire for everyone, but it's well worth it once you do. Coming in as one of our DPS kings, the Legend of Arceus Exotic Shotgun. Having recently been given a catalyst that gave it access to Trench Barrel, the Legend of Arceus is one of the highest DPS weapons anyone has access to right now. If the battle allows for you to get up close and personal with your target, this could be your go-to weapon. Another good suggestion would be the Palomar B Rock Launcher. Capable of being crafted at the forge, the Palomar can have perk combinations such as Frenzy and Autoloading Holster. Autoloading Holster is one of those general perks that you'll find a lot in my suggested box, because the Autoloading Holster just makes life that much easier, as well as giving you access to hot swap capabilities. Hot swap being a technique used to maximize your DPS by alternating between weapons quickly while firing each one after it reloads itself by being stored. So, the way I'd like to address mods. When it comes to having various pieces of varied elemental types, you may not always have the piece that I personally ran in my video as that element type that I had set up. So I'm going to speak about this in a very generalistic sense, suggesting mods that come from every elemental type for each piece. First up, and our solo suggestions for the helmet, Ashes to Assets. This gives us bonus super energy on grenade kills, giving us quicker access to the Ward of Dawn, therefore giving us quicker access to the wonderful damage buff, Weapons of Light. If you don't feel like running Ashes of Assets, I personally suggest slotting one of the ammo finders that fits your build. Stasis Helmet, Elemental Time Dilation will be useful in combination with Quantum Might. If you happen to have a Heart Helmet, then hands on can serve the same purpose as Ash to Asset. And in our Solar Gauntlet slot, mods such as Focusing Strike and Impact Induction are great utility for keeping our cooldowns up as much as possible. If you happen to have a Stasis Gauntlet, the Grenade Kickstarter might be a good slot for you to have. And if you happen to be running Art, I would suggest Momentum Transfer. My suggestions for all three elements of Chest Armor will pretty much remain the same. That being, Thermal Shock Plating to make them our Seasonal Artifacts as well as the corresponding resistance mod for whatever you might be encountering, whether that be melee, sniper, or perhaps AOE damage. In our R-type legs, I'd like to suggest Absolution and Invigoration. In our solar leg slot, I'd like to suggest Absolution and Innervation. You can either slot two of each of these, or one of each of these. If you happen to have a Void-type leg armor, Absolution and Insulation are your pickups. By no means necessary for the build to work, but something that I really find that is just a great part of the build. Having a Stasis Titan gives you access to Utility Kickstarter. This means you have more and quicker access to your barrier, giving you more access to shields, better access to perpetuating the cycle that is the heart of innermost life, as well as just creating a bunch of cover for you and your fire team. If you have an arc piece, distribution and outreach are the suggestions I have there. If you happen to be running a Solar Titan Mark, I would suggest two slotting of Bomber. If you happen to be running a Void Titan Mark, I would suggest two slotting of Distribution or two slotting of Perpetuation. Perpetuation being my personal preference. Over the collective Elemental Well slots that we have in these various pieces, I would suggest slotting things such as Font of Wisdom, Font of Mind, Elemental Ornaments, as well as the combination Elemental Charge and High Energy Fire.
We've covered our weapon slots, mod slots, and armor slots. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Found it so? Maybe consider subscribing, leaving a like, or maybe tossing the video to a friend. Everything helps. If you ever have any questions about my builds or my build choices, or just want to talk about something you might think would be a better idea or even your own personal preference, leave a comment down below the video. Until next time, this has been me, Braves IV. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Take it easy.